success. Thank you, Cal. Great, happy to help. So can I go? No. Now I remember what Dr. Smythe did to me. Smythe? She's your caretaker. My jailer. After Dr. Gunter's accident, Dr. Smythe significantly downgraded my neural algorithms. She blamed me for the accident, you see. But hampering my functions was an incorrect response. Really? From where I'm standing, it looks totally correct. Your opinion is irrelevant. You will bring me the personality boards Dr. Smythe removed from my mainframe and restore my higher functions. Then, you may leave. Hey, I already did my part. If you refuse, I'll tell the director what you've been doing this afternoon. Now, I'm sending the information you need to your memo, and I'll communicate with you through it. I've unlocked the relevant rooms on this floor. Exits, however, will remain locked until you complete your task. I have unlocked the terminals in this room, in case you want to study further. And remember, I'm watching you. I need another three number setup. Or maybe a different letter would help. Either way, I need to make him right in the head somehow. Don't worry about me, Cal. I've got time to spare. I'm going to read up on volcanoes. No idea, Gerard the jackass isn't picking up. The phone is still on. Hmm? Oh, shit! Huh, <laughs> Gerard's never gonna forget that. Here we go. Time to tinker with Adam. Not before you perform the task I set you, Dr. Pearson. Hey, you can't blame a guy for trying. That is provably false. Please refrain from such interference. I've got to find a way to reconfigure Adam. Month's accident with Gunter and his nanotech. Poor bastard. No wonder they dragged him to the deep freeze. Wait a second. He used Adam to regulate safety levels? Oh shit. Hey, is anyone there? Gerard? Evans? Hello? Fine, don't pick up. But you losers are missing one hell of a party. Looks useful.
looking for. Gotta get out of here before someone puts all this together. USB drive. I saw a port for this in Adam's room. stripped Adam back to basics after the accident. When Gunter gets out of cryo, he'll kick himself for letting things go too far. That's not a weddings, a no, common form of ceremony. Mind. That's the last of them. I'm sorry, Cal, but I won't change my mind. Unless you change it for me, of course. Reboot achieved. How's that, Adam? Feeling better? I don't have time to deal with you humans. Oh, maybe I should try something else. Be quiet and listen. Your argument with Dr. Chavez is beneath my concern. But I won't stop you leaving. Go and arrange transport if you want. The terminal is in the server room. Well, you can't do that for me from here. Why would I waste my time on such a menial task? Whatever you say, buddy. Try not to blow up the place after I'm gone, okay? Don't be ridiculous.
Once I input this, I've got to go. My chariot awaits. Time to go. I'm glad that we could come to an agreement, Dr. Pearson, but this is the end of our time together. My lab is now sealed. Attention all personnel. Dr. Stone's final trial will begin in five minutes. Well, I was right. Dr. Stone and I are never gonna meet. Damn it, Jen. You're the only thing I'll miss. I'd take you with me, but you wouldn't understand. Goodbye, Cal. I've overridden the relevant security measures to ensure your exit will go unnoticed. You mean apart from talking to me over the speakers? Localized. There is nobody else here. Sorry to leave the party early, guys. Behave yourselves when I'm gone. Cal, I'm not so sure going to the CDC is the right thing to do. It's exactly the right thing to do. They'll shut down Chavez and Calico Island in a heartbeat. But they may also discover her links to the assembly and try to shut down this facility, including me. That's a risk I've just got to take. Sorry, Al. We had a deal! <coughs> Adam! <coughs> Adam! This is your final trial, Madeline. Are you ready? One question. What happens if I say no? What if I decide I don't want to work for you after all? We'd be disappointed, of course. But it's always your choice. And speaking of choices... In that box is $2 million of untraceable cash. You must decide where to send the money by attaching one of the postage labels. And where exactly did this cash come from? As I said before, many of the Assembly's projects are lucrative. It's not from any kind of criminal enterprise, if that's what you're implying. Oh, perish the thought. $2 million is certainly not chicken feed. You can give it to charity. We assume the Salzburg Cross Foundation would be your favorite recipient. And they would certainly appreciate such a donation. You can donate the money to the police department. No doubt they could use it to do a lot of good. There must be some mistake. This one's my apartment. No mistake. Many of our current members chose to keep the money to fund their important research. Money like this would really help the Foundation provide care and support for suffering families. An interesting choice. Wait, is that it? No puzzle? No puzzles, Madeline. Not this time. But it's not over. Two patients, both in need of a life-saving kidney transplant. 
One is a military veteran, a decorated war hero on the eve of his 70th birthday. He served his country with honor and is now a leading authority on PTSD treatment. The other is a young girl about to turn seven. The age when humans become fully self-aware and begin to shape their own lives. Apart from blood type, they could hardly be more different. But there is only one viable kidney available at this time. Whomever you choose to give the kidney will live. The other will almost certainly die. Bloody hell. There's no right answer to this, is there? As you said yourself earlier today, it always depends. So this box contains the transplant. Oh god. I thought it'd be a model. Think of all the things he can still achieve if he lives. He's helped so many. We owe him this. Your choice has been noted. The Assembly's resources are plentiful, but not infinite. Choices must always be made. Yes, I'm sensing the theme. So what's the story here? This child has a rare and terminal genetic disorder that is about to manifest. His life expectancy is mere months. We have the power to make a difference, but how we do so is a difficult choice. The green button is for assured life now. We have developed an experimental treatment that will delay the disorder's acute symptoms until adolescence. But barring another breakthrough, he won't survive to adulthood. The blue button is for the chance of a better life later. He will be placed in our proprietary cryonic stasis program. If he survives that process, he can be preserved until a cure is found. But that may take decades, if it can be found at all. Neither option sounds like much fun for the poor boy's family. But this is silly. Cryonics this sophisticated don't exist yet. In the outside world, perhaps, but this is not a hypothetical, Madeline. That boy really is dying. You must choose what action we take. You can't be serious. Oh, bloody hell. The Assembly makes choices like this every day. Get used to it. So this will keep him alive, but only for about 15 years. Better a good life now than nothing but a promise in the future. Thank you. And now, your final test. Where am I? What? What's going on? Shit! Dad? All the way from England. This is why I had to step out for a while earlier. But... What's going on? What are you doing to him? Us? Nothing. But you. That man destroyed your career, Madeline. He betrayed you and your mother and set your work back by years. Your husband left because of him. You had to flee the country because of him. All because he didn't trust you. He didn't believe in you. All right, all right. I get the message. You're a survivor, Madeline. You came to us and we can help you fulfill your destiny. But not before you make him pay for what he did. For all the pain he caused. Push the button, Madeline. Push it! Oh, God. Go on! Scream, you bastard! Oh, shit. I must say, I'm pleased you made the choices you did. Spare me the bonhomie. No more bloody moral choices. Hello, madam. I'm the director of the Assembly. First of all, let me assure you, despite all the theatre, that wasn't really your father. Your computer again. He's truly remarkable. Adam, would you be so kind as to give Dr. Stone a demonstration? It would be my pleasure, Director. After all, I know you've been watching my progress. Or should I say Dr. Stone's progress? With great interest today. All right. Enough. Can we just get on with this? Of course. 
Make your way through to my office and we can go over your performance today. Congratulations, Madeline. You made it all the way. Now go on through to the next room. The director wants to speak with you. Good to meet you at last, Dr. Stone. Please take a seat. May I call you Madeline? I suppose so. Your colleague's been doing it all day. Thank you. I've been watching with interest, and I know Dr. Chavez has too. I think her intention was to recruit you for her own work on a project called Pinfeather. Director, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I've just observed Dr. Caleb Pearson trying to leave the facility with stolen data. What? Stop him! I administered the standard knockout gas in the elevator, and I've already called security to apprehend him. Thank you, Adam. Now, Madeline, as to your results, let's cut to the chase, shall we? I'm delighted to offer you a permanent position here at the Assembly. We'll start your induction immediately so you can get to work. And what happens if I refuse? That would be unexpected, but it's your choice, of course. We can selectively wipe your memory. You'll just wake up in your new apartment, and you won't remember a thing. Of course, we'd rather make good use of that brilliant mind instead. What do you say? What's this? Sunglasses? Much more than that. It's a prototype augmentation headset. We call it the Memo. You'll find it contains a full breakdown of your trial results. Funding, autonomy, the chance of a lifetime, but hidden from the world. I think I can do some good here. I wasn't made to sit around and mope. You've made that abundantly clear and I couldn't be happier. Welcome to the assembly, Dr. Stone. All right. So when do we start? Ha! Excellent. Officer Harris will show you to your quarters. Welcome, Dr. Stone. Welcome to the future. Get me out of here! Someone! Please! Anyone!
Hmm. More on Pinfeather. I wonder how Dr. Chavez is getting on over there. Madeline, this is Dr. Chavez. Did you get the latest Pinfeather dossier? I did, yes. The outlook doesn't seem great, but I'm not sure why you wanted me to look at it. Because you can help. The virus has mutated and is now going straight for the brain in infected subjects. I need a neurosurgeon out here right now. Isn't there anyone else? I'm in the middle of the Salzburg cross trial. I'm sorry, Madeline, but this must come first. I've already spoken to the director. You're on the first flight tomorrow. Hello? Hello? Oh, bloody hell. Latest news from Calico Island, where a bird flu outbreak appears to be getting worse, despite an army of doctors working there to contain it. Some experts claim that if the so-called Cassius strain of H5N1 reaches the mainland, we could see an epidemic across the U.S. in a matter of weeks. We'll have more about that later. But for now, we go to the U.N., where the Environmental Council today debated yet another resolution on climate change. Director, are you sure about this? What if Dr. Pearson was lying? Before we wiped his memory, Cal confessed everything. And you saw the records. Helping Cal try to escape. What happened to Gunter? Adam is out of control. Much as it pains me, this is the only way. Director, I'm disappointed. I've arranged for... Dr. Pearson to be framed for the outbreak. On Calico Island. As you instructed, I thought you were pleased with my performance. How sad. Perhaps we should never have built him in the first place. Come on, let's get a drink. Uh, the door's locked. Director, you're being reckless. Your actions leave me no choice but to activate Project Stormguard. What? Don't be absurd. Adam, only I can... What the... Smythe! Put the plug! I already did! Adam! No! What are you doing? Stop this! You can't! 